on Figma plus Tableau. I'm Lindsay Betzendahl, Tableau Zen Master and Consultant Design Specialist at Health Data Viz. And I'm going to bring to you today um, some tips and tricks on how to use Figma and Tableau together. Now, I want to start off by saying, yes, I've been using Tableau for many years, uh, seven or eight to be exact. And I have been using Figma for about maybe a year and a half. However, I think a lot of times we see uh, Figma being used specifically to make kind of images and background shapes, uh, background images and shapes that folks are using in Tableau. But I want to give you guys all not just that, but also more information about how to use Figma with Tableau. Um, from doing that, that kind of information, you know, um, skills like making those images but also how to use all of what Figma can offer. So you can even do prototyping for your Tableau dashboards in Figma, which is what I do on a regular basis for clients at Health Data Viz. So today we are going to talk about frames. Um, this is something that I actually didn't start using until probably six months into my Figma game and uh, they are invaluable. So we're gonna start there because I think you need to learn some of these basics um, when you start to use Figma. And before we get started, I'm going to share just a little uh, information about myself. Uh, I encourage you to do one of these little baseball cards. Figma provides this in their Figma community. You can get the template and kind of make your own. So as I mentioned, Lindsay Betzendahl, Tableau Zen Master and uh, consultant at Health Data Viz. My work superpower, I uh, am generally flooded with new ideas fast talker and thinker um, and highly organized. But my weakness is I have ADHD like nobody's business and I'm easily distracted. So I can sometimes sit and stare into space uh, for 20 minutes and forget what the hell I was doing. My favorite tool in Figma is the frame tool, which is why it's the one we're gonna talk about today. On my introvert extrovert scale, I am an extreme extrovert. I love connecting with people. I love being, um, around a lot of people with high energy and I really feed off uh, the social interactions. That's not to say I don't like being alone. I work remotely at home and I pretty much talk to myself all day. So being a, an extrovert doesn't mean you don't like alone time, because I do. Uh, best time of day or place for me to be productive is in my office, my quiet office, between 10 and two. I tend to peter out by three o'clock and sometimes I struggle to get started before nine. So there you have it. Um, things I want to be good at, illustration, a minimalist design, and saying no a bit more to things so I can get uh, a little bit more control back in my life. And I don't want to be good at coding. I don't know SQL. I don't care to know that kind of stuff. Um, I really like to use Tableau in the tool, uh, that it, things that it does really well, and that I can do in the tool versus um, some of the things outside of that. And my favorite part of the design process is designing and development which is kind of that big circle in the beginning of your um, diverging diamond um, design process framework. And then that feedback and iterating part in the middle when you converge with say a client, you go back over that feedback, you redesign, you push those pixels to make something beautiful. So I like those, that, those beginning steps um, in my design process. Now this was obviously developed in Figma. We are in the Figma frame right now. And uh, if you want more information on that, I can, uh, put a link to where to obtain this in the Figma community. All right, so let's get started. A couple things just to talk about about Figma once you're just in the software. Now, this is the desktop version. There's also an online version. They both are web-based in the sense it's saving up until to Figma's cloud or what have you. Uh, you have to use the internet to use it. I tried using it on the plane the other day and that failed miserably, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, so this is your canvas. It is enormous. In fact, um, I can just put a little circle here for you and you'll see it's already 900 pixels wide. I can go out pretty far and this is how big your screen is. And obviously you can zoom in all the way until you see each individual pixel. I know you can't see that I'm kind of scrolling, but I am. Um, so here's my little shape. I can glue that. So this is your canvas, um, similar to any other uh, illustration tools like Adobe Illustrator. Um, you have a, a pretty large area to work with and then you can get down to that kind of pixel pushing of what you want to create in here. 
Uh, on your top left, we have um, our kind of our Figma button that gives us a bunch of a bunch of options, kind of um, plugins, all these other things you want to create. But really, what you're going to be using is these tools right here, and particularly probably this, these first five. We have our move tool. We have our frame tool, which we're going to talk about today. These are all of our shapes that have very simple um, uh, shortcuts as well. Our pen and pencil tool, text tool, and this is just you know to you know, pick things up and move. And comments is if you're using this tool in um, in like say a work environment or with a group of people, people can come in and share prototypes, make comments, etc. So let me put out a rectangle here to start because I want to show you what I used to do. Right, this is like really big, so let's. Let's make this go back to like 1200, 800. All right, here's like a typical dashboard size. I'm like so zoomed out apparently. So let me zoom back in. All right. So when I first started using Figma, I would create a shape and say, hey, this is my background. And you know, I can color it. You know, it was gonna be white and I'll start like designing within this shape or not within, on top of, I should say. So let's say I was going to put in, you know, some kind of, title here, you know, and then I might make some example of a chart here, let's say, All right? So let's, whoops. Let's say this is what I was going to do. I'm making a quick bar chart. What I came to realize pretty quickly is if you look on the left, this is where you have all of your layers. And all of these things are individual in the sense that they're not um, a collection, they're not within something, they're just kind of all floating out here in our canvas. So this background shape is just a shape. What I used to do, not really realizing how to use frames, is you can take this entire area and you can just right click, click and group the selection. And now I have something that is a group and on my right hand side down here, I can export that group and say, yeah, I'm going to export group one. And now I have my image that totally works just fine. Um, you know, it works. It is not the best way to use it. And I'll share why. So let's get rid of this group because I don't want that. Let's go to frames. So when I create a frame, this is essentially uh, similar to like in Tableau, like your Tableau dashboard, you have created a frame to put all of your objects within them, right? And even in Tableau, you'll notice um, that you can't put things outside of the frame, outside of the dashboard space, even though there's a gray space on the side. Side note, there is a trick to do that. Um, you can move things off onto the side space, but they're not no longer within the dashboard. When the dashboard is up, you're not seeing those things. This is sort of similar. So here, you know, in Figma, they give you some predetermined frames, essentially sizes of a dashboard kind of, right? Like, let's think of it that way. Or you can just draw your own. So I tend to just draw a box. And once you have a frame out here, you'll see on the side here, it'll tell me, you know, where it's located on my canvas, which really doesn't matter um, for the most part, and then how big it is. Now, I always make this exactly the same size that I want in Tableau if I'm gonna use a background image. Or if I'm prototyping, I'll make it the same size that my client wants their dashboard to be or something that I expect it to be so I know the limits that I am going to be using or that I'm gonna be constrained to. So now that I have this frame, you'll see it's frame one. I can rename this and say, you know, this is going to be my landing page. And I can keep creating other frames as I work through kind of a prototype. Um, so now that I have a frame, in this case, it has a background color, which means, again, if I were to use it as an image, this background color does show up. You can turn off this background. Now, it's hard to see because the background of my canvas is this gray. You know, I can always change this background color as well. You know, we can change that and we could, um, you know, add a fill to this or, or what have you. All right, let's just go back to having it be colored. So here's my frame. So as I said, you can um, 
you can modify this frame, you know, you can add effects and strokes to it kind of like you would a shape. But what I really like about frames is the ability to put other objects within here and um, they only show up within the frame. Here is an example. So I can say, let's, here's a circle. I now have a circle. Let's just make it another color for some whatever reason. I have this circle. If I move it off the frame, you'll see how I don't see the other parts of it. It only maintains, it's kind of like, it's sort of like masking, where um, I'm only gonna see it once it's in the frame. If it comes out of it, it's out. And you'll see on the side, this ellipse is no longer within my frame. Now I can even from here, drag it in and say, be part of it. Let's see if I can get it in there, there we go. But I can't see it, so it is technically a part of this frame but I can't see it because it's actually outside of the scope or the window of the frame. Let's see, I can drag it back in. So there's two ways to get things out. You can just pull them out, they end up out. You can pull them in, they end up in. You can also move them from this left-hand uh, window. So this is really useful, particularly if you're creating things that might um, end up a little bit outside of a frame or particularly like shapes. So here is another example. So I wanted to create this nice kind of, uh, and I'll go over how to make shapes in a, another video, but let's just say for purposes of illustration, I'm going to create, I don't know what colors I want it to be, this shape that's going to kind of go outside of my, oops, my frame. And you'll see right now, this is actually isn't even in the frame, but I will get it in there. Don't you worry. I'm just messing with these colors. Let's do another, oops, uh, another one. And we'll make this, these colors are totally not going to match. I don't know. I'm just picking what I got here. Let's see. Let's try something different. Um, all right. And we'll do, whoops, like so. Okay, so now I have these uh, shapes that I created. I'm gonna group them together and I'm gonna put them in my frame. So now you'll see I have, I've created something that I didn't have to worry about the edges and making these all line up really well. I've made something in this background that extends, you can see, you know, outside of the frame, but I only see what's within it. And so this can be pretty useful when you're creating particularly like shapes that um, are gonna have a better effect if they go outside of it, or you don't have to worry as much about some of the um, extensions beyond it. And so I really like using this. So for example, here we have something where I can create kind of this background um, and use this as my you know, default background and then layer in things within um, Tableau, for example. Now, as I mentioned, these are all now within my frame. I can close my frame and see they're all together. When I hold the frame, everything moves with it. I don't have to select everything because it's already within my frame. Same goes for exporting. Down on my export button, I can now export this frame as an image. And it's much quicker than grouping things together and like, um, um, creating shapes that have a an exact edge to them to fit into some other shape. Um, so this is how I use frames. I also, again, when I'm building actual prototyping, let's say this is my background image. I would never really have a background image like this um, in a dashboard, but I can quickly, um, you know, option drag and duplicate these things. And let's say I'm prototyping. So this one has, you know, some trend charts in it and this one has bar charts in it. Like, I now have two landing pages. I can rename this as like dashboard one um, and prototype within that. Um, so that is how I use frames. 
and there are infinite ways to do them. They're also really great for things like icons. If you're building icons, you can use a frame. And essentially, let's say I have a little white one here. If I put an icon in this one, and I put another an icon in this one, the way, let's just, uh, um, let's make a polygon real quick, just for illustration purposes. So let's say, um, let's say I have an icon like this, and then I have another icon that is like this. What you'll notice is their sizes are, or let's say like maybe for whatever reason, this one is got some other things to it. I'm totally making this up. And it looks like this. So this shape, you know, is 158 by 158. This shape now is different, right, than this one. And if I were to export these two shapes as they are, they are just going to be that blue box. The frame allows me to more specifically say, I want my, my icons to have the same shape, knowing that sometimes there are icons or shapes that have a different dimension within in them. Think of like a microscope that may like go this way. And so its overall dimension is going to be different than something that is very symmetrical. And you can use frames then to make sure when you export icons, or shapes that you're gonna use in Tableau, that they have the same size, so they're rendering the same when you're putting them into Tableau. So that's another quick way to use frames. It's really just to um, provide that constraints um, and, and size of something that you might ex be exporting. All right, and that is my quick little tutorial on frames. Um, please hit me up if you have any questions. Hope that was useful. Thanks so much.